On today's show, rumours suggest BMW is dropping the Vision M project, but investing more in mainstream EVs and hydrogen fuel cell development. Lucid's Peter Rawlinson talks about the special source that gives the Lucid Air its crazy energy efficiency, and Tesla patents a new tabless battery that could be super duper revolutionary. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we are 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope you're all well. And as with last week, I hope those of you who have returned to work under level three are staying safe as New Zealand gradually returns to normal. We start today with the unconfirmed rumor that BMW's Vision M Next plug-in hybrid supercar might have just been cancelled by the firm. As BMW blog explained this week, the Vision M was due to be the replacement to BMW's now discontinued i8, but it cites both its own sources and other news outlets in claiming that the car has been cancelled. Before you start believing that BMW is pulling back from plug-in vehicles completely though, it's worth noting that the company issued a press release this week discussing the impact of coronavirus and the company. Despite the impacts of COVID-19, it reiterated its commitment to spending $32 billion on research and development into both battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles between now and 2025. By the time this video goes live on YouTube, it's likely that Tesla's Fremont production facility has once again started producing cars, despite continued shelter-in-place orders in Alameda County, where the factory is based. And that's because on Thursday, Elon Musk sent an email to employees at the facility laying out plans for a resumption of production with a 30% Tesla normal workforce as of Friday afternoon. It was in response to California Governor Gavin Newsom announcing California moving to stage two of its COVID-19 reopening plan. Musk has been a vocal opponent of physical distancing orders and jumped at the chance to reopen Fremont. But because there are legal questions concerning if Tesla's Fremont facility is actually considered stage two essential, things may have changed again. Škoda has published the first video of its upcoming Enyaq 4 electric car ahead of a launch next year. Based off the MEB platform that underpins Volkswagen's ID3, remember that Škoda is part of the Volkswagen Group, the Enyaq 4 looks like a no-nonsense estate car, or station wagon if you prefer, with 585 litres of load base space. There's a choice of rear or all-wheel drive capabilities depending on the model chosen, as well as three different battery options and a claimed range of up to 500 kilometers on the range-topping model. Like the ID3, there's a maximum 125 kilowatts rapid charging option and up to 11 kilowatts of onboard charging power. We'll get pricing for it in the near future. The week after he scared some of us with his bizarre Twitter tweets, Elon Musk was back in the spotlight this week, rejoining the controversial Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan Experience online talk show. Just like the last time Musk joined Rogan, there was plenty discussed covering a whole wide range of different topics, and of course, that included Musk's various business endeavours. Although this time Elon did stay away from pot. During the two-hour show, Musk stated that none of Tesla's Chinese employers at Giga Shanghai were killed by COVID-19, said that it was likely the Tesla Cybertruck window that was so famously broken during the reveal event was likely damaged with the sledgehammer demo earlier on in the event before those steel balls were fired at it. I'll be covering more from this interview later in the show. Despite the impact that coronavirus has left around the world, one of Volkswagen's board members, Jürgen Stackmann, tweeted this week that Volkswagen will open up its official order books for the ID3 in just over a month's time on June 17th. This does seem to suggest that Volkswagen's winter of hell with the ID3 software as well as production issues may be coming to an end, but I should note at this point that only those with actual confirmed reservations or 
pre-reservations, if you will, for the ID3 will actually be able to order their car on June 17th. Following a pattern that's now become completely standard across the entire electric vehicle industry, Volkswagen is going to focus on fulfilling those pre-reservations before opening up the order books to non-reservation holders. In a world without COVID-19, we'd have already seen the reveal event for the upcoming Lucid Air sedan, and I'm guessing we'd know a whole lot more about it. I may have even driven one. But this week, company CEO Peter Rawlinson, the original engineer for the Tesla Model S, discussed with the IEEE Spectrum magazine some of the details about the car's specs, including its impressive efficiency figures. Apparently, it's all down to a new permanent magnet Signorus motor, in which Rawlinson says the company has managed to get it to spin like an induction motor. This eliminates the cogging torque from the traditional PMSM motor and thus gives it a far, far better efficiency. At the moment, that efficiency is said to be a very impressive four miles per kilowatt hour. As I alluded to earlier in the show, Elon Musk discussed a whole lot of things on the Rogan Experience this week, including future Tesla vehicles. And one that did get quite a mention was the Tesla Roadster, the version 2, a car that Tesla had originally planned to launch by now. According to Musk, the second generation Roadster won't enter production until both the Tesla Semi and the Tesla Cybertruck are on the market, which by a little deductive reasoning means that I think it will probably be at least 2022 until we see it, as that's when the Tesla Semi has just been delayed to. When asked for details, Musk said that, quote, that's better left for a real production unveil. But with the Roadster, we're going to do some things that are unfair. People who have been waiting for the Roadster won't be disappointed. It's not exactly clear what he meant in that statement, but I guess we'll have to wait to find out. Volvo has just announced that its next generation of cars, both electric and non-electric, will feature advanced LiDAR systems manufactured by Lumina. The idea to future-proof all of its current and new models so that at some point in the future it will be able to push autonomous vehicle functionality to its customers' cars via an over-the-air software update system. It's long been a goal of Volvo to offer its Highway Pilot, which is similar to Tesla's Autopilot, on customers' cars. Volvo is close to a fully autonomous future for all of its cars, and it's already proving itself very competent. But rather than introduce software now, it says it wants to gradually introduce features as legislation and technology allows. With this latest announcement, Volvo is continuing to stand by its early promise of indemnifying drivers from any fault when its autonomous features are operating and there's a crash. That's an approach that's noticeably different to Tesla's. Tesla has just patented a new battery cell construction that revolves around what's called a tabless electrode. It's all to do with the way that cylindrical cells are constructed. Current cells are essentially a long roll of two different materials separated by an electrolyte with a tab on the top for one electrode and a tab on the bottom for the other. They're then rolled up. Using this technology though, current must flow through the long roll before it can exit out of the end of the battery. Tesla's patent, meanwhile, focuses on pulling current out of the sides of that long roll. So when the roll is rolled up to become the battery cell, current has far less to travel before exiting the battery, which lowers internal resistance and improves lifespan. It also seems similar to something we heard Atlas talk about a few months ago with its battery cell design. So it's likely that both companies are thinking along similar thoughts. And that could be great news for everyone. As you probably know by now, we do like to cover all forms of transportation here on the channel, as long as it's clean and green. And this week is no exception with the news that Volt Aero has just revealed its production version of the Casio hybrid electric aircraft. And no, it's not a watch or a keyboard. Designed to be capable of electric only and hybrid electric flight, the planes make use of what the firm is calling a pusher configuration with a propeller mounted to the rear of the fuselage. Initial deliveries will be scheduled for 2022 with the four seat variant, the Casio 330, being the first one off the production line. It's certainly unique, especially for an airplane, but it does remind me a little bit of some of the sailplanes I've come across in the past. And finally, Ford's been promising us an electric pickup truck for some time. And we know that the F-150 electric and hybrid is now in development ahead of a reveal this year or maybe next. But if you're looking for a larger Ford pickup, you're pretty much out of luck, at least 
when it comes to production electric vehicles. But engineers Greg Coles, Bill Scalia, and their colleagues at Selco LLC have been busy at work converting a Ford F450 pickup truck to electric. Using Tesla components, they've meticulously taken this usually diesel-powered Julia apart and made it zero emissions. And as their latest video shows, they've got a lot of torque to play with, plus four-wheel drive and four different gear options to choose from. They're just about done with the build, but you should totally go and watch now to see how they got to this point, and I've linked to it below. And on that note, we're done for this week. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, be sure to switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. They make it super simple and easy to make the switch. And if you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, renewable, green power that will keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. I'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, stay safe remember to wash your hands and keep healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.